Good morning, Vault Dwellers. It's Wednesday, March 27th, and it's time for everyone's favorite episode. Do, 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 do. Hey, Minerva. Yay! Hey there, it's Minerva. Tommy and I are about to pack up here at Crater and move on to our next destination, but before we do, I want to get this video out to you that tells you where I'll be next, when I'll be there, and what plans I'll be selling. Tommy and I want to thank all of you who left such kind comments in the last video, and for those of you who had to post comments that were not so nice, just remember that Tommy's former associates now work in big tech companies and probably know where you live. That's right. Not everything out here in the wasteland is wasted. If I ain't got something nice to say to someone, I don't say nothing at all. I just shoot them. Some of you also sent over questions, which I'll answer at the end of the video. The cutoff to have questions in the next video is Saturday, so any that come in after that will be in the video for the following week. The questions was the best part. Ask more of them in the comments. Minerva, can I say my part now? Sure, Tommy. Go ahead. Minerva said I get to tell you jokes now. I hope you laugh. Here goes. If April showers bring May flowers, what do May flowers bring? Settlers. Get it? Thank you, Tommy. That was great. You're welcome, Minerva. The plans that I sell are near perfect copies of plans I've encountered in my travels. You don't have to complete any quests, have any alignment with a faction, or even pay full price. So although you could get these somewhere else, why would you? My plans work just as well, and cost 25% less, so come shop with me instead of those other vendors. Today is Wednesday, March 27th, and I'll be on my way to Fort Atlas in a couple of hours. It'll take me a few days to arrive there, but I'll be set up and ready to go by noon Eastern time on Monday, April 1st, staying until Wednesday, April 3rd. You can find me next to the road, just outside the entrance. I like that spot because the Brotherhood of Steel can keep me safe from any raiders or ghouls or scorched, and it's easy for you adventurer types to find me. Then what am I here for? I keep you safe, too. Of course you do, Tommy. Where would I be without you? When those horny Mirelurks attacked us by the Pioneer Scout Camp, I thought for sure one of the kings was going to take me away to his lair and make me his queen, but you rushed right in and put your fist through his shell. It was almost romantic. Oh, shucks, Minerva. I knew this guy in New Reno once, and the last thing he said to me was that I should do the right thing. Actually, maybe that wasn't the last thing. I think the last thing he said to me was, please make it quick, but that didn't make no sense. Anyway, Tommy won't never let nothing hurt you. Let's move on to next week's plans. I have two items in the armor category, one of which is what I think you would call game-changing. That's the Chinese stealth armor. This little marvel of technology is a jumpsuit with embedded stealth camouflage, sort of like wearing stealth boy pajamas. You won't be completely invisible, but you'll be close enough to invisible that you're practically invisible. Unless you sneeze or fart or fire a 50 cal like Oscap does, no one's gonna know you're there. Unlike other stealth mods you can get from armor that might make you invisible while stationary, Chinese stealth armor keeps you invisible while moving. It also provides up to 140 points of damage and energy resistance, protection from waterborne diseases, and a whopping 1,000 points of radiation resistance, which amounts to a 98% reduction in absorbed radiation. The radiation resistance is equal to that of a hazmat suit, but unlike one of those tinfoil monstrosities, you can actually survive a fight in Chinese stealth armor. You can also just sneak around if that's your deal. The Chinese stealth armor only weighs five pounds, so it's the kind of thing you can just keep in your inventory if you think you'll ever need to go into a blast zone and actually get into a fight. I'm also selling the plan for the Chinese stealth armor helmet, but it's just for looks. You can get the armor plans for 3,000 gold and the helmet plans for 1,238 gold. In the weapons category, I'm selling plans for the gauntlet. This is a legendary melee weapon that looks like a power fist with a circular saw blade mounted across the knuckles. This isn't just for looks. It's the bladed mod, installed by default which is an actual rotating circular saw that will cut your enemies to ribbons if you get close enough. You know, that reminds me of a story. This one time I was drunk on Wendigo Sweat Hooch and playing cards with some blood eagles. I didn't have no caps, but I had these extra five toes on my foot. I was sure I was going to win, so I started betting body parts. Imagine my surprise when I didn't win. And before I could say anything, one of them blood eagles tried to cut off the toes on my foot with one of them gauntlet things. I grabbed him by the neck and told him no. And by no, I mean I killed him and his buddies and took all their caps. Tommy, dear, we talked about this. You're going to scare away the customers. You're supposed to be the sweet, cuddly ghoul, remember? Right. Sorry, Minerva. It won't happen again. The Gauntlet is a medium speed melee weapon that will do up to 50 points of damage plus bonus damage as 10% of your strength, and it will cause enemies to bleed for 5 seconds. Crafting it uses legendary modules, so it will have one or more random legendary attributes as well. Depending on how lucky you are, you might be able to build one of these to even be deserving of the legendary title. 
There's a mod for it out in the wasteland that changes its default bladed mod out for a set of shock pads, replacing bleed damage with energy damage. This is a loose mod, which means it can't be crafted, so I unfortunately have never been able to copy plans for it. Some say it doesn't even exist, but who knows? If you've seen it, let us know in the comments. The gauntlet plan is available for only 188 gold. That's only 20 gold per toe. Next week I'll have a bunch of plans for weapon and armor mods. The first one is the unfortunately named Secret Service Jetpack Armor. Although that sounds like it's armor, it's not. It's a mod that allows you to put a jetpack on your Secret Service armor chest piece, which means you'll have to know that plan as well. I was selling it a couple weeks ago, and if you don't already have it, I'll be selling it again after Fort Atlas, when I do my big sale at Whitespring the week after next. Most jetpacks are only available for power armor, but the Secret Service armor and the Brotherhood Recon armor are special and let you use jetpacks too. A jetpack allows you to propel yourself up into the air, sometimes quite high, and stay there for as long as you have action points. In Noodle's opinion, it's a mandatory addition to your armor, especially when combined with the marsupial mutation. Jetpacks let you get up above enemies and attack from an elevated position, which always gives you an advantage. And since this plan literally makes you harder to kill, it's not cheap. You can have it for 1,500 gold. I have two other mods for Secret Service armor. One shows you how to add pockets to your chest piece, and the other shows you how to add them to your arms and legs. The chest mod gives you an additional 10 pounds of carry weight, and the limb mod gives you an additional 5 pounds per limb. If you have a complete set of armor, that's 30 extra pounds of stuff you can carry about. Each of them is available for only 188 gold. Next week I'll also be selling two mods for the Warglaive. This is a two-handed melee weapon that's both slow and heavy, but these mods give it a little extra kick. If you add them, you'll see the base damage for the weapon get cut in half, but the full base damage will be added as secondary damage. This secondary damage is not affected by weapon-enhancing damage buffs and debuffs. However, global damage boosts like Bloody Mess and Adrenal Reaction do have an effect. You'll have to play around with mixing and matching these to get the best results. I'm selling both the Cryo Blade and Plasma Blade mods for 150 gold apiece. The Plasma mod adds energy damage with a chance to disintegrate enemies and turn them into a puddle of green ooze. The Cryo mod adds Cryo damage slows enemy movement for 3 seconds. If they can't move, they're easier to hit, right? Now, if you're stomping around out there in T65 power armor, you might be interested in the Medic Pump, Overdrive Servos or the Stealth Boy mods. The Medic Pump monitors your health and automatically uses a stim pack when your health falls below 50%. It goes on your Power Armor torso, and it tries to be smart about how it applies the stim packs. If you're above 50%, and you take damage that puts you below 50%, then it will apply a stim pack. If you're already below 50%, such as those of you who use bloody builds, it will apply a stim pack anytime you take any damage. Depending on your playstyle, that may or may not be what you're after. However, that doesn't matter to me and I'm happy to sell you the plan for 188 gold. Overdrive servos go on your power armor's legs and increase your sprint speed. Nothing is free though, so you'll spend more action points to do it. It's important to note that the maximum boost speed for sprinting is capped at 20%, so a perk card like squad maneuvers or a mutation like speed demon won't do much when combined with this mod. That plan is only 563 gold, and you better buy it quick before someone runs off with it. Ha ha, he goes on the legs and they're gonna run off. That was funny. Also available for 563 gold is the Stealth Boy mod. This goes onto your power armor torso and casts an invisibility effect like the Stealth Boy whenever you crouch. It won't make you completely invisible, but it will make you very hard to detect. I've never really thought of power armor being stealthy, but certainly if you combine it with the Escape Artist perk card, you'll have a much easier time slipping out of fights if you find that you're in over your head, as they say. Now, whether you're in T65 or not, I'm also selling the Hellfire prototype paint job. This can be applied to any power armor and will give you a very devilish appearance, sure to scare the wits out of anyone who sees you coming. It's available for 1500 gold, which might sound expensive until you consider just how many suits of power armor you can apply it to. It's a good deal. This paint was only available as a reward during a specific gameplay mode that has since been discontinued. It was very hard for me to get my hands on the plan to copy it for you. More danger for me means more gold from you. It's just how business works. This week's camp item is somewhat ironic, considering that Tommy and I were attacked by Mirelurks on our way here. It's the Mirelurk King Tube, a large tube that holds a Mirelurk King in preservation fluid. This makes a beautiful addition to any camp, but it will make a particularly nice addition to a camp that has the Autopsy Chemistry Station workbench from the upcoming Season 16. Your only other place to get this is a random drop from running a daily operation. Compared to that, I'm a sure thing and I'll give it to you for just 2,000 gold. Every time you look at it, you can think of me. Now. On to the questions from the comments. Lisa asked if I ever have any mods for a flamer. Unfortunately, I don't. Other than the napalm tank, you either already know how to make the mod or else you learn it from scrapping. There are also a number of paint mods that are available from your atomic shop, so keep an eye out for those. 
The Flamer Napalm tank is common enough that you'll find it in World Drop by Enemies, or else you can just buy it from a number of vendors in Watoga, Pleasant Valley, and Berkeley Springs. The Chaos Monitor asks what church I go to, specifically if I'm a member of the Church of the Mothman. I laughed when I read this. The Mothman? Really? Aren't they a cult masquerading as a church? No, my friend, I've been going to church since I was a little girl. I'll admit that it's harder out here than it was back in Washington, but I like to remember that wherever two or three people are gathered in his name, he is there in our midst. Church can be anywhere, and these days, even religion doesn't matter. Belief in a higher power and a better way of life keeps us all civilized. Do you think the Scorched or the Ferals go to church? Maybe if they did, they'd be a little less lost. There's a church in Helvetia that is scorched in it all the time. They don't seem civilized at all. Manic Assassin asks when Bethesda will let me sell things that all of you don't already have. I wish it was that easy. Remember that I don't sell anything that I haven't copied myself, so before I can sell it, it has to exist. I spend the majority of my week traveling across the wasteland, and I'm always looking for new stuff to bring to you. If I find anything worth copying, trust me. You'll be the first to know. That's all I have for you today. I'll be selling all of these plans next week at Fort Atlas, where I'll be from April 1st to April 3rd. I hope to see you there. This is Minerva, signing off. Thank you, Minerva. And thank all of you for tuning in to the new Galaxy News Network. I am Marcia Synth. And I'm Fordog. And until next time... Stay safe out there, Vault Dwellers. <laughs>